All right, so we're gonna do a little series here uh, for Tesla, just some basics, um, going through different things uh, to get your Tesla working, uh, how you want it to work, and uh, different features that uh, we can do. So I'm gonna make this a series, and today we're gonna be talking about how to engage autopilot. All right, so to engage autopilot, um, first you gotta make sure that it's set up and turned on. Since I'm having so much trouble with FSD in this car, I'm gonna be fine with turning autopilot or FSD off and just do with regular uh, autopilot. Um, so there are different options for autopilot. So you have either the traffic aware cruise control where it will not steer at all for you. You have auto steer, uh, which will steer as well as have the traffic aware cruise control, meaning it will not uh, run into the car in front of you. So if you have it set at uh, 70 miles per hour on the interstate, the car in front of you is going 65, it'll match that speed um, and it will not, um, you know, it won't go around them or anything because it'll just be on auto steer. Um, you do have some other options uh, <clears throat> beyond that, um, which we'll talk about in just a second. So I believe that, so you do have to agree that you're gonna use it properly. Um, but <clears throat> there is the option to turn on navigate on autopilot, but I don't believe that that actually comes with uh, every Tesla unless you purchase the FSD package or if you um, subscribe to it. So you can subscribe to FSD for $99 a month or you can purchase it outright for $8,000 right now is what it is. Um, but so you won't have this option of navigate on autopilot without that. And it also will not have the traffic light and stop sign control. I do not believe it has either one of those. Um, the navigate on autopilot would actually on the interstate take, uh, exits and, um, interchanges. And as well as it would, uh, move around slower vehicles. Um, so if you have it set on, 70 miles per hour and somebody's going 60 miles per hour in front of you, it would change lanes, go around them and continue on. So just uh, some things that are available on navigate on autopilot versus just regular autopilot. So we're just going to talk about auto steer. I'm just going to put it in auto steer and that's it. Um, and also not going to do the traffic light and stop sign control. So all you do once you have this, you can have it either a single pull or double pull. I would, I always do single pull now. Um, but actually in the past, if you did double pull, it would, uh, engage traffic aware cruise control with one pull of the stock. And then, uh, the second pull would, would do the auto steer, but we'll just do with the, the single pull where it goes into auto steer. All right. So we just get out on the road and actually you can do this just about anywhere that it has, uh, actual lane lines. So we'll just get out here on a main road that actually has lane lines. All right, so here we are. It sees the lane lines. The little steering wheel shows up here so you can engage it and you do a single pull and that means it's engaged. So it has the blue lines around it indicating that it's steering within the lane as well as the blue on the uh, steering wheel here which also indicates that it is actually steering the vehicle uh, and you can disengage it by pressing up on the stock that completely disengage it disengages it so you have to press the accelerator again uh, and take control of the steering wheel turn it back on here with one pull and you can see it's going to slow down for this truck in front of us uh, because they are slowing down for the light uh, if they were not there, it would not slow down for the light uh, because we do not have the traffic uh, traffic light and stop sign control turned on. Uh, so this is just the basic autopilot. But in stop and go traffic on the interstate, this basic autopilot that comes with every Tesla is a great feature. It is something that honestly should be standard on every vehicle these days and it is standard on a lot of vehicles um but it's been standard on tesla for uh a long time i'd say it's been almost 
I think it's been close to a decade now uh, that it's actually had this um, feature where it would steer within a well-marked lane as well as um, control the speed uh, with the uh, traffic aware cruise control. So that's it. You can change the speed. I believe you can go up uh, five miles per hour over uh, the speed limit. So, yep, it, it's not going to let me go over 50 because it's 45 miles per hour speed limit. And to do that, you just scroll up or down on this to change the set speed that you want as the max speed. I can make the max speed 40. We're slowing down for the light so it doesn't count. But, <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it. Another way to disengage it is to press the brake. So if you press the brake, that disengages it. You can also uh, turn the steering wheel and that disengages it. So those are the three ways you can disengage it. You can either press up on the stock, press the brake, or you can actually take over the control of the steering. And definitely, <laughs> it's interesting me using this autopilot after using FSD for so long, there's actually a large difference in uh, the smoothness. So this is actually, when it starts, uh, it actually kind of jolts forward kind of abruptly, in my opinion. So it's not super smooth. So, you know, something a little different about it. Um, and it's obviously just staying in this lane. It's not going to take any turns. So if you have navigation uh, that you have set up. So if we're going to go back to Ray's Donut Shop here. We have the navigation set. Uh, it wants us to do a U-turn here on the navigation. I mean, the car is just not going to do anything. It's just going to continue going straight and disregard that. So that's it for autopilot. All right. So one thing I did forget to mention earlier was that when you are on autopilot, you do have to keep your hands on the wheel. So you have to be prepared to take over at any time and you have to keep your hand on the wheel. There is no eye tracking for autopilot. Um, <clears throat> so what it does is it basically just will kind of nag you every now and then if it doesn't sense that you have any pressure on the wheel. So if I just leave my hands off the wheel and don't put any pressure on it, at some point it will indicate. It's usually about 30 seconds or so. Let's see what it does. But it will indicate that I need to put my hands on the wheel because it does not detect that my hands are there. All right, apply slight turning force to the steering wheel. So see, you just tug it just a little bit, not enough to actually take it out of autopilot, uh, but just enough so that it can tell that you have your hand on the wheel. So you're supposed to just keep your hand on the wheel. Usually when I'm driving uh, like on the interstate or something with autopilot, I would just keep my hand, like one hand down here, rest it uh, or keep it up here and kind of like hold on it. It doesn't uh, have to be too much force, but just enough for it to tell that you uh, are holding the steering wheel. <laughs> and uh, next time we'll talk about FSD and maybe the, some of the differences there in FSD and the advanced features of autopilot uh, versus just the standard basic autopilot, which comes with every Tesla. So thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.